Hello, welcome to Theory Thursday with me. I'm your host, Kylie Becker from Eastern Arizona College. Today we are going to talk about the first chapter in our Introduction to Communication Theory book, which is a first look at communication theory. I have the 10th edition. If you are in my basic comm theories class and have a little bit older edition, no worries. They're pretty much basically the same. And also they have a really good website that you can always go on and look and see what all the updates are. So I'm going to start this kind of with the assumption that you already know what communication is because if you're in my COM 200, you've already been in communication classes with me. So we've probably talked about this at least a couple times, um, but just kind of as a recap, it is the relational process of creating and interpreting messages that elicit a response. So communication can be face-to-face. -face. It can be through letters. You know, if you send a letter to someone, Sometimes you get a letter back. Sometimes they give you a call on the phone to be like, hey, I really enjoyed getting a letter from you. It can be through Facebook. It can be, you know, an Instagram DM or a Twitter DM or, you know, a message on Tumblr or, you know, a passive aggressive post-it note from your roommate. Um, those are all communication. Um, they're all sending messages and you would probably respond in some way to most of those either actually physically responding by sending a text back or even just emotionally responding like, ooh, why'd they message me? So then actually, what is theory? So it's a set of systematic informed hunches about the way things work. So theory kind of helps us connect the dots about what we're seeing in daily life, what we're seeing in these situations happening. You know, if you have enough dots that kind of are all together, people create theories to say, this is what I think's going on. Like, this is the relationship I see between those. Um, there's always an element of speculation with it because, you know, unlike the hard sciences, people are always changing. They do, you know, you could put the same person in the same situation two different times and they might respond differently based on, you know, what they learned from that first time. Um, but with theory, you have to have defined key terms. So we all have to agree on the meaning of the words we're talking about. Because if you and I have a different definition of the word symbol, then we're probably not going to be able to come to a consensus about that particular aspect of this theory. And before you develop a theory, you have to have a lot of good background information. You have to know what other people are saying about this situation that you're looking at, um, what people have said in the past. And then are there any other alternative explanations that might be possible um, based on other theories that are already in use. It's really, really hard to kind of come up with a new theory um, because, well, the communication discipline's pretty old, but it's just, it takes a lot of work. I mean, it's always possible, you know, hopefully there'll be new communication theories in my lifetime, uh, probably a lot with social media um, with as much as it's gained popularity in the past 10, 15 years. But, you know, we don't know. People are still connecting those dots together. So how can we conceptualize theory? You know, for some people, I can just say, yeah, it's a way of looking at the world or creating things. And they're like, okay, yeah, that's great. But for a lot of us, we really need to kind of get a mental picture of what it might look like. So there's three metaphors that we typically use in the communication discipline. So nets, lenses, and maps. And all kind of have their good things and their bad things about them. So you just have to pick the one that works best for you. So theories as nets. So Karl Popper said that theories are nets cast to catch what we call the world. So you can have grand theories, which might be more big nets, but that's saying something that happens in all communication instances all the time. And that's really hard to pin down because people are very complex. And with that, you'd still need a lot of smaller nets to catch those smaller fishes to be able to capture these distinct acts in small situations on an individual level. But like I said, people are complex, people are not fish. You cannot weave a theory so tightly as to capture everything. Um, it's really hard to say, you know, all people do this in all situations, or every time someone's in this situation, they will do this, or they will communicate in this way or act this way. It's, it's nigh on impossible. You can look at a theory as a lens, so like a camera lens. So you have different lenses. You have a 35 millimeter, you have a 50 millimeter, you have fisheye, you have 18, 24, you know, 200 millimeter, whatever. It shapes our perception by focusing on some features of a, of a situation, of a context, while ignoring other things. 
So like with a fisheye lens, you can see a whole bunch of things. So you can see more, but with the 200, it's really, really zoomed in. You can only get a specific thing in there. But that's saying, you know, two people could look at the same situation and depending on which type of lens they're using, they will have very different interpretations and explanations of what is going on. The downside with this though, if all of these situations depend on the lens that people is using, you know, some people might abandon the search for truth because, well, truth is relative. It all depends on which lens you're using. I would argue that there is, you know, obviously a truth and, you know, maybe both of the people in the situation are wrong based on the lens they're using, but there is an actual thing that is happening that you would have to find the right lens for. And then theories is maps, which is, I think, the one that the book... Um, likes to use. So they're designed to help us navigate some type of human relationship. But as they say in there, I, and I'm quoting it because I really like the words that they use, you know, the map is not the territory. You know, no single theory can portray the richness of interaction between people that is constantly changing, always varied, and inevitably more complicated than what any theory can chart. So your takeaway from this should be humans are complicated and theories are just kind of a helpful way to shape how we look at certain situations. So if I want to look at health communication, which is something I'm interested in, I might not use expectancy violations theory because that would probably not be a very helpful lens, a very helpful net, a very helpful map to look at something in regards to health communication. Maybe I'd look at the health belief model because that is something more tailored to health communication, might be more helpful as a lens to look at it through or a net to catch what I'm looking for or a map to lead me in the right direction. Okay, so really short introduction to comm theory, just like I said, really basic things. So my comm majors who are in this class. So what are some of the communication questions that you personally want to answer? Puzzles you want to solve or any problems you see in, in society and communication that you would want to fix? So we will talk about that in class together. But if you are just watching this on YouTube for fun because you somehow came across this, you know, you can leave that down in the comments below and let me know what communication things interest you. So have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you are, and thank you for joining me for Theory Thursday.